Previously on The Rings of Power. My colour. Representation. Someone that looks just like me. The plebeians, so to speak. Female representation. And I actually give him a little nugget. Uh, Not a poo, the me throw. The poo? When do you call Keep poo? Keep going, the camera's rolling. I give him a nugget of me thrill. Uh. <laughs> An evil, ancient, and powerful has returned. I'm a girl, Galadriel. Yeah, hello, Galadriel. You'd cosplay as Galadriel. Well, I think, I think her armor is the best, isn't it? Before Sarah ravaged her. <laughs> She's an elf disgrace. You could use one word to describe this season. What word would you use? Grach. Oh, yeah. Which means. Crap. That is a genuine answer. I did not edit that. We also had this for the one word that describes season two of Rings of Power. What word would you use? Thirsty. Admittedly, he didn't know what it meant. Is this a thing? <laughs> this is a thing. Oh, You're a meme drop. now. Yeah. Although I think he's going to be accurate anyway with what they're going to do to Sauron. See, chemistry. you had to gather. I chemistry. mean, I didn't want to go there, but chemistry. yes, the chemistry was off the charts. Of course, Sauron ravaged her. You'll have to wait and see. But you know, they're great enemies. So hopefully. We're now going into a story which is undeniably Tolkien. In fact, it looks like Sauron is going to be getting it off with everybody. What was most helpful to me was looking at characters who had been in very domestically kind of abusive relationships. We've already had Charlie Vickers talk about how there's moments of bromance between Sauron and Celebrimbor. You see them become frustrated with each other in a domestic way. Bickering, there's, there's bullying, there's torment, and there's trauma. And they only double down on that in these interviews. Very codependent, um, um, gaslighting kind of relationship. And so after this question at the SDCC. So many of us in the LGBT community see ourselves in Tolkien's writings. Any chance we'll see ourselves on the show? Maybe you have already. <laughs> it looks like they are trying to keep this relationship realistic even if it is against canon. Both knew where our stories were headed because it's Tolkien and it's law. Celebrimbor yes. creates beautiful things instead of... I do, yes, jobs. yes. He doesn't go around, there's not much slaying. No. Celebrimbor. He does slay in a certain way. He does. He does slay. <laughs> very codependent, um, gaslighting kind of relationship. This week, Entertainment Weekly has released a load of new stuff for Rings of Power, and you can really tell it's women doing the marketing. If it was guys doing this, you would have had tension and battle. We would have seen a preview of some of the action scenes with the gore. Instead, we got a fashion show. That was nice. Did it say nice? Sorry, I meant hideous. We've even got this guy on a camel, showing its toes. We start with Galadriel, or as I said, fair play Morphid. One of the few wearing a normal, and yes, I realize I'm using that term very loosely, feminine dress. And I will always applaud masculinity and femininity when found in their proper place. Which might be why my reply to Deezer was simply, HOLY! Over then to Celebrimbor, who's really giving Honey I Caught a Leprechaun vibes. And Deezer, where if she turned around too quickly, she could knock down the two towers by herself. Over then to this poor chap who, uh, well, he got given a pearl necklace. <laughs> they also gave him really baggy pleated trousers, which let's face it, are simply designed to look like a divided skirt for riding. And we know this isn't an accident, when Sauron got given them as well. But don't worry, we'll get to him in a bit. <laughs> Back to the Harfots now, she's given a really ethereal fantasy dress, which is weird considering the only thing she contributed to the series is cannibalism. Nobody goes off train. Nobody wants to. That's right. You have a blister on your foot. I'm sorry, we're gonna have to leave you behind. Bile's bright apple stuck in the snows of the mountain pass. We, we wait for you. We're going to be left behind. In our cooking pot. Over to Muriel now, who is given this dress, which I think is literally meant to make her look angelic. I say that because of the picture they also gave out at the time. This is really given the second coming of Jesus vibes. Or Gandalf the Black. I can't really work out which. Over now to Elendil. Or me when I want to look tough and wear curtains. I do like that they're really getting involved in recycling now. If my grandma wanted to throw those out, but don't worry, I've got another use for them. Oi mate, just drop me pork pie on floor. Not happy fella. <laughs> Ken. And how could we get Sauron channeling that going to a funeral in my dad's clothes as a kid look? Do you want to look big and tough? Wear a suit that's clearly too big for you. Altogether, K-pop doesn't stand a chance. And they know a thing or two about a pearl necklace, let me tell you that. But once again, this new release of information highlights the change in marketing for season two. Entertainment Weekly put out a video that at times was genuinely funny. Before Sauron kind of ravaged her happiness. And then... <laughs> Sauron ravaged her. <laughs> it's great, very Tolkien. <laughs> well, other part of the media was funny accidentally. Warning. Warning. There will be spoilers. Where are we? We're in Middle Earth. While on this quest, she ends up washed 
onto a raft. This was washed onto a raft. No mention of trying to swim across an ocean. That'd be stupid. But despite this, it was nice to see the cast and their personalities shine through, rather than just being horrific to the audience all the time. We both play elves. We do. And, um... um. I'll just pretend like I'm not here. <laughs> so while yes, we did still have homages to the identity stuff, being very specific in our description of Deezer this time around. Also, this is the first time we see speaking a female dwarf. Yeah. Uh, I still did like seeing the actors actually joke around during the marketing. Elrond and Durin are very good friends. It's kind of this love triangle, isn't it? Um, Prince Durin. What, are you in love with Elrond? <laughs> Acting like people, not arseholes, is a plus. Who knew? Mm -hmm. You forgot your name then. <laughs> In fact, if anything, some of the most stupid stuff came from the interviewers themselves. Facing off against some orcs. Tease anything about that and why Why we're seeing them pick up arms. Huh, I can't understand. Why are these orcs going around with swords? Well, they're orcs. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're orcs, dear. What did you expect orcs to do? Well, you know, they're orcs. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. They're bad. They're bad. They're bad guys. Yeah. Very naughty. Um, Orcs are evil. This is the point of them. Actors being incredulous with the interviewer always a plus. Especially as in previous interviews, they've tried to play off the orcs as not evil. And we're just children who want a place to live. No, if you want to stick to Tolkien, the orcs are evil because they exist. Some things and people are just innately evil. Or as Morvid Clark decided to describe pure evil. Very naughty. Um, These are orcs. Understatement of the year. Uh, if you were to roam the floor, roam among the masses, the the plebeians, so to speak. Seriously, I could have written that question myself. If you were to glide among the filth and the stain of humanity, what costume would you use to disguise yourself among the plebs? Galadriel's armor is when she goes into battle. For me, when I saw it, was just like drop. I could, I could get into wearing that. We could have guessed that one, mate. We all could have guessed that one. Battle. You'd cosplay as Galadriel. Well, I think I'm her armor is the best, isn't it? With regard to that earlier question, any chance we'll see ourselves on the show? Let's face it, it's either the Stranger or Calabrimbor, isn't it? I feel like something inflatable. They're always quite fun. Oh. We're going to get him and Tom Bombadil nipping behind the bike sheds. You'd have to invent bikes first. Charlie, your character goes full heel turn at the end of season one. I was kind of shocked. Not going to lie. I It, it, it got me. Like, you, you guys That's pulled nice. one over That's and got good. me. That guy's Barry Allen, the slowest man alive. <laughs> that was an amazing twist. Never saw it coming. Never saw it coming. Charlie himself even says before the series airs, lots of reporters were going, you're just Sauron, aren't you? You're definitely Sauron. I can tell you Sauron. That guy, though, no idea. <laughs> and the orcs are abusing and frightening. Um, sorry, just got a bit dazzled. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> tough. And they decided that the previous outfits weren't enough for Rings of Power. Oh no, we had to do it again. This time, Gladriel came out in what I think was supposed to look like an armoured dress. There is an armoured place up here, but the rest, I don't know whether it was meant to just look like tin foil or actual armour. The thing is, unfortunately, it did end up looking like her crotch was eating her dress. Before Sarah ravaged her. <laughs> She's an elf disgrace. And then rather worse than that is when someone pointed out that that dress has already been doing the rounds in other shows. In Baby Reindeer itself with uh, other lunatics. <laughs> Obviously in that size, uh, well, we're a bit above the... Um the legs on that one. It is funny though that they just got something off the rack and then just added a piece of armor to it and went, huh, that's Galadriel. <laughs> And then we go up to Sauron. I think they just thought, this guy's definitely evil. That's where he wears black. And for some reason, a, a belt around his, around his neck or something. And I know this isn't meant to be Tolkien. That's why they can have zipped up sleeves. But the outfit is supposed to give you the atmosphere of Sauron. It's supposed to be his look. It's supposed to give you an idea of what's going to be in the series. And what it seems to be is going to a goth rock club. On top of this, the Harfoots won't be the only ones in this series. They're also introducing a new Hobbit-esque characters. You can you guess what they look like? It's Amazon. Of course, you can guess what they look like. Once again, Again, what I'm wondering is where did all these people vanish to before the movies? Will we get that in the final season? Go on, Amazon, be brave. There are still no hobbits in Rings of Power. Now we just give you fake ones instead. Since the Harfoots predate the hobbits, it's possible to think of Nori and Poppy as distant ancestors of Frodo and Sam. Moody says, while I was acting, I was wondering whether or not I'm related to Smeagol. But I couldn't justify any sort of narrative like, oh, I'm his great great grandmother. That felt like a bit of a reach. Honestly, I think any relationship that could bear children being on Amazon Prime would be a bit of a reach. That's the most unlikely thing to see out of Hollywood in 2024. In the books, the stores are known for loving water. I think it's so interesting that their origins are really arid and dry environment, where water is sacred. So if you travel and come across a river, this is your history. Basically the Aeel from Wheel of Time. Of course, the second you look into them, you end up with the stores 
were a Riverland people. <laughs> they were known as fishermen. While most hobbits had a strong fear of rivers, Stores were known for using boats, fishing, and being able to swim. They wore boots of dwarven proportions for muddy weather. <laughs> and what did Rings of Power decide to turn these wetland creatures into? Well, they just copied their ale from Wheel of Time. Obviously, we live in a desert. It's a misty day in England, and Markella Kavanagh looks like a fairy queen. So does Kella Brimble. <laughs> He does slay in a certain way. He does. He does slay. <laughs> Sorry, just got a bit dazzled. <laughs> That entire photo shoot was done under storm clouds and rain. You shot it in England, what did you expect? If season one was the hero's journey, then season two is the villain's journey. The foremost among these villains is, of course, Galadriel, the Lord of the Rings himself. Oh, I mean Sauron. Sauron's only evil because Galadriel made him that way. In fact, in the interview, she keeps talking about how she was betrayed by Sauron. No, he told you the truth at all times. I've done horrific things. I just want to leave my evil ways behind. And she's like, no, come with me. She made a fool of herself, says Clot. No, she proved that that she was evil. So she's in a whole new space where she's no longer the voice of authority and reason. Was she ever? Nobody listened to her. Also, if you go up to somebody and go, yeah, by the way, we made those rings because Sauron told me to. No, your judgment shouldn't be trusted for anything. You should be in prison, actually, I think. She's an elf disgrace. But now everyone knows Vickers is Sauron. The show can get inside the villain's head in a way that even Tolkien didn't. Because that's a good sign. Maybe he didn't for a reason. No, 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 we, we know best. In the past, the camera would cut away from him when he had his private thoughts, but now the camera follows him through those thoughts. The audience is in on it. They've previously said that you're going to pity Sauron, the personification of evil himself. Good luck! In Sauron's mind, he's the hero of his own story. He wants to heal and rehabilitate Earth. He wants to rule it. Oh, well, yes, you can be a benevolent dictator. Sauron isn't one. You can tell that by how he treats people. It doesn't matter what evil thinks of itself. So to deceive Celebrimbor, he abandons his Hellbrand form in favor of a new look, Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. The long blonde hair and elven features are meant to trick Celebrimbor into thinking that this new arrival is an emissary, like the godlike Valar, rather than their adversary. So it's lucky then that his new form of Anatar looks so much different than he did previously as Hellbrand. It's been here among us all along. Look, I mean, I'd never know if they hadn't told me it was the same person. Spending so much time together shooting their scenes in season two allowed Edwards and Vickers to really build a complex relationship between their characters. I bet it did. We both play elves. We do. And, um... um. I'll just pretend like I'm not here. <laughs> Those trousers come with a flap at the back for a quick entrance. Celebrimbor has the ability and Sauron has the vision. Sauron has the ability. What? It's an interesting give and take. Sauron has the ability. Well, that's why he literally makes the one ring himself. Sauron is typically depicted as an overpowering overlord, but in this, he's on an even playing field with Celebrimbor. That's what makes Sauron truly dangerous. <laughs> Other villains try and find your weakness and poke at it. Sauron finds out what your strength is. The image of the eye is appropriate because Sauron sees you. Stay awake at night. Are you thinking of that one, did you? Do you know why a ship floats and a stone cannot? What can be the metaphor for an eye? Sight. I really think they're cocky with this. And over in Khazad Doom, they struggle because they're losing light in the kingdom and so can't grow crops. That's why the rings are necessary to fix those problems. But when they put on the ring, there's a change in his father, a darkness. It has a massive effect on him. Tolkien provided comparatively little information about the powers of the seven rings given to the dwarves. That presented the perfect opportunity for rings of power to fill in the big blank spot and cannon. Are you excited yet? Not we found a hole! Typical Hollywood, isn't it? We'll fill that one in. I became a total slag. She's an elf disgrace. There are tantalizing hints that the dwarven rings didn't control the dwarves in the way Sauron might have liked, but it did stoke their greed. Its ambition meets fear, meets love, meets pain and worry. One minute she's like, yes, we need the rings. Then she's like, oh no, but the ring. But her mission is, by any means necessary, your bottom needs to be on that chair. Desire to avoid all exercise, not the biggest of surprises. <laughs> and now there's a power vacuum in Numenor. Muriel's position is weak. I would have argued it always was, considering she was never a queen. But now, now her greatest ally is Elendil. His political education begins. Once she becomes blind, Elendil is now her eyes. So he sees and informs, she interprets, and thus Elendil learns. This is a leader in training for where we ultimately have to get him. And now you see why they changed who Muriel is. It's the dominant submissive position where everything he has, everything he is, he owes to Muriel. Of course they had to change who Muriel is. What is the point of doing prequels in the first place? To tie in your ideology into the foundations of the material. To take the reflected glory from things people actually care about and pervert it 
into what you wanted it to be. To say that everything people love springs forth from your ideas, your values. Or, as Tolkien said himself, evil is not able to create anything new. It can only distort and destroy what has been invented or made by the forces of good. There has never been a better explanation of prequels. Isildur, meanwhile, is left to fend for himself. I'm awoken in a cave and have to fight my way through Shelob to get to safety. What a coincidence. Rings of Power is just going to be walking through a who's who of Lord of the Rings. Look, I remember that one. Which is an obscene way to start the season. This will be why they keep saying that everything is kicking off immediately. Because it is literally just, look, you remember this character? And then they move on to how they're going to put in what Jackson's movie left out. The singing spirit of Tom Bombadil and the Barrow Whites. Whether they existed in this period or not. Ganon doesn't matter. Jackson left something out and so we can do that. We can be us. We may not be able to create, but we can distort and destroy. And so obviously they wanted to make this as canonical as possible. They were so scary in real life, we had amazing physical actors who could do body locking and contortion. Don't know why you decided to put that picture in. That is not a complimentary face. And they want to make sure Sauron is everywhere in this season, even if he's not in that area. People will either have a point of view on Sauron. And some storylines are set directly in motion by Sauron, and others are people shadow boxing their own fears, which is also set in motion by Sauron. <laughs> Seems like the great get out clause for all of this will be, Sauron did it? Yeah, whether you knew it or not, he did. But the more we get into the marketing of Rings of Power, you can tell they've definitely changed their tone there. A bit more relaxed about it, they can laugh and joke with the actors and stuff. I was actually very surprised that some of the stuff wasn't cut out of Entertainment Weekly, but I like that that was left in. There are times where you're like, okay, they're definitely doing better marketing this time round for season two in the Entertainment Weekly season one roundup video. But then they come out and do all the outfits and stuff for the covers like, what on earth is happening? And you read about the plot for season two and then it gets worse. So we're in a crossroads where I would love to know who's in charge of what bit because whoever did that roundup video, get them to do more. And whoever did everything else, Get them to do less. <laughs> Including the writers of the series, like J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.